listening to a public account. We invited you here in respect of uh, in respect of the disbursements that were made from service wide votes between 2017 and 2021. We have information that we requested for the Office of the Accountant General and of course it duly furnished this committee all those releases that were made for service wide vote <coughs> excuse me, the period that is under consideration. Uh, when we invite you like this, it's equally important that we tell you whether I've invited you. You know, service wide votes, as you know, is supposed to be like a agency form that is put together to meet some goals for recurrent and capital expenditure. But we have found over time that even the standing committees in the Senate that supersite you are not aware of this disbursement of service work. So that when you even come for budget, when you even come for budget performance, you know, I am reporting back to your committees. You don't disclose what is given to you for service work. So they are obligated yourself in detail of the use of the use for service work. So it's only a public accounts committee constitutionally mandated <coughs> to make inquiry from the Office of the Accountant General to see if the provisions as laid out in the financial regulation really have been followed. One, outside of your projection, uh, projection provisions, you ask for this, that you made a request. Then the approval following due process was given by approving authorities, and then of course other processes of having to go back to the Minister of Finance, to cash management, getting the AI, and coming to the Accountant General's office for the release of the funds. We want to see that process was All right? And then of course what you did with the money. If it became important for you to get extra, you know, budgetary provision, to be sure for maybe something came up. And for that reason, you now made the application maybe through your supervising uh, ministry, or to the Minister of Finance, maybe to the President, and the President gave you approval, and he came back, and now you have used the money. You have used the money, the AI will tell us whether it was for the current shortfall or for capital. If it is capital, I want to see what the money was used for. We are particularly interested in, if it is capital expenditure, go make the right money for capital expenditure, by way of taxes if the right taxes were deducted, all right? And if procurement was equally, you know, effective, let us see if the procurement act was adhered to. So this is why we have invited you. You know, we have seen a progression, service level from seven, about 700 billion to almost two trillion. So it was comfortable, it was comfortable, so that we have invited you. All the benefit, all the agencies that are benefited will be released. We have called all of you. You know, we will try to put to be brief. Tell us, yes, we got it. We are going to for. If the figures don't even agree, so we didn't get that. Then the AIE that was read will tell us specifically what the, how, how much it was and what the money was used for. So we will not take the figure, that authentic figure that we will follow. Okay. So we have asked you to make your presentations to make, make it easier for us. And in that way, we apply for the money. We didn't apply for the money. The money was just given to us. That's why we say we want to see evidence of request. Then the approval are given. All right? And you've got the amount of money that you received and all of what you did with it. If you have given us your presentation in this manner, it will make this you know, process be very seamless. That figure that we wrote to you, if you don't mention, that we will send to you, you either confirm it or you can tell us your own figure. All right? Whatever figure that comes from you, we we'll still have to confirm from the Accountant General. You know, supported by you know uh, authority to incur expenditure, AI. So the AI to tell us what the money was used for. Yes. So now let's go to it. In the year 2020, for capital, what was written is that 300 million naira was given to you, and then for the current 2.673 billion, 
will give it, make it a total of 2.973 billion, 138.96 naira. So first you confirm that whether it is correct. It's correct, sir. Correct. Okay, let's have confirmed. Okay. Yes, a total of uh, 1.000. These funds were disbursed in this account, um, in, on this AI number. We have an AI01, A01, 0006348. They are all a recurrent um, items. So the fund was the funds was released for October 2019 salary of limitation. We have 39 million 548,123. And another AI. A01 006? Yes. 39. Which year? 2019. For the augmentation of salary shortfall. 1 billion. Yes. 1 billion. Six. 180 million, 1,568. In 2020. 1,658. Let me call it again. 1,668,000,000. Let me call the figure. That's the figure I'm calling. Okay, 1,680. 001 yes. 568. Yes, correct. Right. 2020. Yes. I have a figure for another AIE for that year. 993. Yes. For 136. Yes, for 2020. What's the AI number? Is um A01. Okay, 56571. That's the AI number. Yes. It's correct. Nine nine three. Nine nine three. One three six. Five two eight. The mention I have to make is that well, um, Mr. Chairman, distinguished senator, and distinguished senators. Well, you already know the circumstances of the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit. Because the FIU was created by a legislative bill, it wasn't an executive bill. So, and then when this thing happened, Mr. Chairman, you were right there as a member of the anti-corruption committee, and you knew all what happened. So, this particular body is the making, more or less, of the Nigerian Senate. And then after that, immediately, you also remember that it was excised from the Nigerian, from the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. So when it became an independent body, uh, Mr. President appointed me to be the Chief Executive Officer. And in the mercy of God, as we have it, you were the one who wrote the process to confirm me at the Senate. So you knew everything from day one. So what happened when we move from the FCC. Uh, in fact, the decision of the FCC then was not to give us even one staff. But again, after all the go between the National Assembly and then the, the, the presidency and so on, and by the mercy of the um, continuation provisions in the act that you provided, there are no options. So we left with a very little number of staff, like I think around 50 or maximum of 70, including uh, uh, help and non-office non -office staff, including support staff, who are all 70. And then it's a, an entirely new government agency at that time. So and then also uh, because of the situation, they also refused that we 
partake in their budget. So it's like we left with completely empty hand and a piece of loan. So again, either we have to come back to the National Assembly to even look for what to start with. And then there was no supplementary LC. So we now made it emergency, we went to the Ministry of Finance. As you can see, the requests for both funds were not made by me. They were made by the Office of the Accountant General of the Federation and the former Accountant General himself requested because I went back to the Minister of Finance, I told her that I didn't even have money for salary. And uh, I cannot go because the FCC removed us from their job. <coughs> so, and then they are not an agency that we can debit. So, with this presentation, the Finance Minister asked me to go to the Accountant General and then put my complaint forward. Then in the process, they gave, they started giving the money just to hold the nature of the salary as a debt. But in the process, again, Mr. President, again, approved through the Salary and Wages Commission our own substantive salary, which had to come with arrears because we were not getting the salaries. So it is on account of that, Mr. Chairman, that again, we made our presentation with the new Salary Act and the directive from the presidency that salary should be provided for us. And then the Minister of Finance again told me openly and verbally, there's nowhere you can get salary now except you can go to the service wide. And for you to go to the service wide, it has to come through the office of the Accountant General of the Federation. Then that's how we got to get even the first salary structure implemented. But by the next budgetary season, um, the budgetary system included us formally. And that's why you see it uh, only twice it happened and it has not happened again. In the interval of the initial disbursement and then later another disbursement and then no more since I think 2020 or so, so it says. Then why is the location of the money? The money was disbursed to IPPIS. As you know, that the government, entire government is maintaining a central payroll system. So we were not in control of the funds completely. But I was also paid my salary from it, and my little areas are also good from it, but strictly from the OAGF and the IPPIs. So the money did not come to the NFI completely. And in no, no way, not even to our account at the central bank. So that is how we took that one and then by the next budget, the payroll system adjusted in line with um, IPPIS request and it was continuously disposed to IPPIS. Then now the second point, which is very important, is the 300 million naira, which was um, from capital disbursement of the service wide <coughs> This money, did not even come to the Nigerian government. Uh, what happened was that ECOWAS had what they call West African FIU Forum. And this West African FIU Forum was located in Cotonou, Benin Republic, as its headquarters. Then it, it was moved four years before 2019 to Cotonou to set it up permanent. One through membership contribution and then assistance from the home government. That's the government of the new republic. So then the body went there and stayed for four years. When the republic was unable to set up the office. So now they called back to a plenary in Senegal where all the state parties sat down and then said that Benin seemed not to have capacity to create this international organization to function properly. So, and the only country that has the resources, the manpower, the technical skills, and everything to set it up is Nigeria. So they asked us if Nigeria can take that international body to Abuja, 
set it up properly and create it and transfer it back to the ECOWAS. Then we now told them that we are not interested. Uh, because the country was grappling with loans, there were a lot of issues, there was no money, the government was complaining. Then they said, okay, then it means the body will fail. So the argument erupted there, we didn't want, and then they subjected it to a plenary vote of state parties. Then by majority of 16 states against Nigeria, they moved it to Nigeria and to the Nigerian government. Then we said, okay, do the extra of the vote, and then we'll take it to our president. If he agrees, fine. So they did the extra of the vote, and then I brought it to President Buhari. He said, okay, there's no problem. Um, how much do you think can set up the district? I said, no, I have to discuss with the uh, Minister of Finance and the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. So he said I should go to the Secretary to the Government. And then the Secretary to the Government reviewed it and said, okay, the request for maybe something like 300 million naira or 800 thousand dollars and give it to the body, then we they built it, recovered from the anti-corruption um, process recoveries. So we did it. The Secretary of the Government wrote to the President. The President directly approved the funds to be disbursed to them. So these funds did not come to NFI. The funds, first of all, went to account open in the name of ECOWAS in the Central Bank. They kept it there. And then later they came back and said that the uh, financial process is not within the Nigerian government, but they have account in ECOBank. Then Central Bank moved the entire money to Echo Bank for this. And up till now, um, last week, we finished setting up the body because it do it, it happens like that, just like CBN. Uh, Nigerian government mandates CBN to create agencies sometimes. So the same thing the Echo was used to mandate the Nigerian government because of our strength to create departments for them. But immediately the creation um, is completed we move it back to them, we withdraw our secondary staff, and then they launch formal employment for all the countries. So this is what happened in this case. So the body now has been fully set up, and this is not the first time we did it for them. Last two years, I wrote Mr. President to approve, um, through what we call an establishment memorandum, to move the body through the Nigerian permanent mission to the ECOWAS president to adopt it and continue with it while we withdraw our, our staff. So the memo is with Mr. President now. But uh, these monies were spent by the acting executive secretary appointed by the president of Nigeria. So um, when the money came, the money left from CBN to the West African FIU Forum. And then after that, the secretary to the government recommended the president appointed acting executive secretary on secondment from the Nigerian Public Service. And you know the Nigerian Public Service secondment is only for two years. And two years again and no more. So the, the acting executive secretary is serving the last two years of her secondment exercise. And then it will not be renewed by the PSR, the Public Service Route. So now, the president is having the memo. Because of these uh, campaigns and all these things, uh, his availability was very, very slow. So once he approved, we'll take the body and move it to the secretary to the government. Then we'll transmit the entire agency back to the courts. Okay. So that is what, so we have not seen at FIU even one couple from this 300 million. Uh, and the expenditure, we have nothing to do. But even if break down, the executive secretary can be invited. And then she will come and show you how and when they spent this particular 300 million and how much is left. And it was also one off. Uh, the agreement was that even ECOWAS wanted us to keep the body. But we told them that Nigeria does not operate this way. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that's it. Uh, so this way. With the presentation that you have made to us, because knowing the duty you perform, there's no doubt that uh, you know, the, two, the two sums that you received, you 
I want to meet you know, with the personnel cost of your staff when you left the FCC. I remember very clearly. And then I called the 300, 300 million to Yeah, I went to the interest of the cost. West African, yes. Uh, office to be established. So that will, you know, one of my colleagues just mentioned even if it is capital expenditure. And the, all the problems we have with these, you know, these expenditures is that they are not captured Proper. by the Office of Auditor General. The funds, you know, but we think of it that the proper use, the whole department was used, I may put to by you. It's not, that one is not in this route. And I think we can see all the approvals, you know, the president, right, through the, through yes. the office. Yes, yes, uh, yeah, he's the chief of staff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and of course, that is what we tell others when they come in here, you know, and they tell you that, uh, you know, they didn't, uh, they don't know anything about approvals. Don't see where money comes without approvals. Yeah, you are that's what we are trying to correct. Many and, uh, of them. And sir, uh, uh, the general should also go and audit the money. No, 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 no. That one, you that want one, him to go and check it. That one is not your... Yes. I don't know how take it off. We'll take it off from there. Yes. You know, we are in the same team with them. We want transparency. Yes. The yeah, money was given. I mean, the money is... That's why we are here. You're supposed to be looked out by somebody. Yes. Yeah. I'll tell you, the reason we are talking from here, you know, is for, is for other agencies to understand, you know, that... We are spending public money. There's a process. You know? Yeah, it must be followed. To, to follow it, yes. you know. So apart from that, meeting personnel cost. I know you are 100 percent on IP's platform. I mean, it's not you that we account for personnel costs yeah, because uh, where they insured for, you don't even know that you are short for a personnel because it's between the officer and the general and uh, IP's. Okay, and when you have more money. Beyond what was budgeted for you, it's still between the Qatar General's office and IPS. Yes. National Assembly, once we approve personnel cost, all right, the the execution of that personnel cost is now at the mercy of the Qatar General's office and IPS. So your own cannot be different. Definitely. What was given to you for personnel, as we excised from uh, EFCC, okay, you started and that was where the money was given. The question now is, after that 2021, your personnel cost now is the regular yes, budget. Yes, streamlined. Now the regular budget, yes. And then the 300,000 was for the establishment of that. Office. Yes, the new equals, and the body is moving back to equals now. It's okay. Well, is there any other question?